Hey guys, uh, welcome and good morning. And thank you for um, joining my session today. Um, so I'll be presenting on how to elevate search results with Solar 7. And first I wanna go over um, why I wanted to present this today at TripleCon and to you guys, to the community. Um, the reason why is because um, I recently um, led the solar upgrade effort for a federal agency and we went from solar four to seven. And then um, there are a lot of blockers and I felt like this is good information to share to the community. Um, the goal for the session is um, for you to get insight on upgrading from solar four to seven or in general on your local laptop or on a project that you're on that's using search API solar. Um, and that's the context for this presentation. Oh yeah. and. Um, my name is Bruce Ewan, and I'm currently a technical advisor for a federal agency. Um, so for the session today, um, I'll be going over a brief introduction of myself, um, the use cases for this feature that I'll be presenting. Um, also, before getting to the reason why you're probably here on how to elevate search results, I'd like to briefly go over how to set up Drupal 7 with Solar 7, oh, sorry, Triple Nine with Solar 7 using a uh, land up, Lando setup. Um, after that, I'm gonna go over to why you're here probably. Um, so if you stick around, um, you'll see why, you, if you tried to get Elevate working before in your local and it isn't, um, the reason for that. And then after that, I'll have a link for an example you can download later whenever you wanna refer back to this presentation so you can um, download the relevant files for yourself, set up yourself, and then um, compare it to maybe the project you're working on right now. And then, um, as usual, I'll open it up for questions at the very end. And during the questions, um, one thing I did not include in this slide is like um, other modules like search API best bets and search overrides. Um, if you are wondering why, the, the way I'm doing it now versus those other modules, then you can ask those questions then because I did not include that in my deck. All right, so who, who am I? Um, my name is Bruce. Um, working for, for a federal agency as a technical advisor right now. Um, I was trained through a training program um, as a junior developer and, and a general developer. Um, and then I was fortunate to have time to study for the Grandmaster, or right now it's called the Acquia Triple Certified Triple Expert. All right, so the use cases, the reason why you would um, use the feature that I'm about to present to you today, which is um, elevating your search results using the solar backend only, um, basically using solar config files only. Um, and they are, the first one is, uh, most important, is you want absolute control of what appears at the top um, when you do a search, um, and you want absolute control of that. And secondly, um, the second use case is you want control of the order of it because typically in a search page, um, it's sorted by relevancy score. Um, when a bunch of items that are indexed have the same relevancy score at the top, it's, I think it's ordered by the order of which it was indexed by search, by solar. So in that way, you don't really have control over it. However, with this feature, um, you can, if you have a bunch of boosted items, you can control what's at the very top. And then lastly, um, the last use case is if um, you offer a client um, um, the ability to have their content appear at the top um, for popular search terms. And those are the three top use cases for this feature. All right, so I'll briefly go over, um, for this example, how to set up Drupal 9 with Solar 7. Um, in no way do you have to follow it the way I do it, um, but I'm just saying this is one of the ways that I got working on my local personally, and I've done it on my work laptop as well, but on my local it's different, and this is how I did it on my local. And they are, um, the steps are six steps. Um, first, obviously, uh, with Lando, you want to set up, install Drupal 9 and Solar 7. Um, it sounds generic, but uh, Lando makes it easy using containerization to do that. Um, secondly, you want to install the relevant search modules 
and of course their search API and search API solar. Um, after getting your site ready and having all the relevant search mod modules installed, um, then you want to you know configure it, configure Drupal site, log in, set up the third step of so uh, setting up the search API server um, and the search API index. Fifth step um, is to it's one of the important steps is to make sure your solar config set is appropriately set up. That was one of the main blockers on my project. Um, and lastly, of course, you want to create your search page um, with views. And uh, prerequisites for this example is um, Docker installed, Lando, and um, IDE of your choice, but uh, I use VS Code for my example. All right, so the first step um, is getting um, pretty granular, um, but I think it's good to know um, because um, at high level, sometimes you want some more detail. Um, so first step, obviously, um, is to install Drupal 9 and, and Solar 7. And to do that, um, one way you can do it is you download the zip from the Drupal project, and then you create a folder. Um, this is where you'll be placing your solar config set later on in our example. Um, which, and then um, you want to make an appropriate lando.yaml file. Um, this will tell um, what your container will be built and initi initiated on. Um, and I have an example of it uh, later on in the presentation. After you have your .lando.yml file set up, you want to execute lando start to uh, start your container from in Lando. And then you want to run lando composer install. And that will install all the dependencies. Um, for those who don't know, composer is a package manager that um, basically pulls in all the necessary packages your site needs, and you specify that in composer.json. All right, so after that, you go to your host name in Lando, and to get that host name, you would execute Lando info, um, in case you missed it after Lando start initially. Um, after that, go, after going to your host name, you go through the typical Drupal setup, that blue screen where you put in the language, profile, where you select like umami or standard, um, and you set up your database information, and, and that's where you also install and configure your site. Okay, um, after getting Drupal 9 and Solar 7 um, stood up using Lando, um, you want to install um, the relevant search modules, which in our case are just two. There's Search API and Search API Solar. Search API uh, gives a generic framework um, for modules that um, give search capabilities, and then Search API Solar, um, as the name uh, implies, it gives um, your site the ability to connect to a Solar backend. And as usual, you use your composer to install those packages, and then you enable on your site using uh, Drush en, um, short for enable. Okay, after you installed the relevant modules, you want to go ahead and start configuring your site to use Solar. Um, and the first step after that is to add your search API server. Um, so to the image to your left is the search API page. Um, to get there, you would hover over, if you have admin toolbar, you'd hover over config, search, metadata, and then search API. And then you'll see a brief overview of all of your search API servers and ind indices. Um, and then after you click add server in the image to your left, you would see a um, edit page. And part of that edit page is selecting your solar connector. Um, and these are provided by solar plugins. Um, Aqua provides one, it's not shown there, but Aqua does provide one so that your site connects to their, their cloud environment, um, Solar 7 um, engine in their environment. Um, typically, uh, on your local laptop, it would be um, just a standard solar connector. And in our example, uh, the protocol is HTTP instead of HTTPS. Um, host name is search, the solar port is 8983. And then solar path is forward slash. Um, in older versions, in solar four, um, depending on the ver version of solar you use, it could also be blank. Um, but as of, as of right now, forward slash um, should be good enough. And the solar core, you can name it anything you want. It's just the name of your core um, that you want to um, call it. 
after you create your search API server, um, you would want to create your search API index. And um, this is basically where you tell Solar what you want to index um, so that later on, when a user queries your site, um, they'll base, they'll try to match their query text with what you, ha what you have indexed in their, um, in Solar's index, it sounds weird, but. Um, so running over again, to the left is the search API page. Um, and when you click add index, um, you'll be able to select the entities that you want to index. In this case, only nodes will be indexed because we only have content indexed, I mean check marks. <laughs> um, but you can also uh, tell Solar to index other entities such as media, um, which is another popular use case. Uh, you want to show media as well as content. Um, and I guess files, I guess, and blo maybe blocks. Um, and at the very bottom, you'll see which um, search API server you want to use. And um, in this example, we're using the one we created earlier called main search index. Um, this associates this index with that um, solar um, backend. Um, so this is where you sel select which solar backend you want to use for that index. Um, to your right um, is a tab on the index page called fields. And this is where you tell it um, which field is more important than the others. So in this case, uh, we have a body and title field. And to the, to the right, it says boost by 21 points, I guess. And what that means is if you have t two pieces of content and you search for Apple, and Apple appears in the title for one content, but if Apple appears in the body field in, the, in another piece of content, the content that has Apple in the body field will be boosted up and will be at the, more at the top. Um, and yep, that's it for the index. Okay, the fifth step to standing yourself up locally um, with Solar 7, uh, with Drupal 9, is um, making, you, making sure you configure the right um, config set. Uh, this is really important because um, if you don't do it, you'll get an error message saying you have an incompatible solar schema. And um, this could, this could um, really uh, block your efforts in upgrading solar. Um, so fortunately, though, it's easy to resolve it. All you do is click the Get Config Zip button. And what that does is uh, it generates a solar config set for your solar core. Um, based on your setup that you have done. And then after you generated that and you download it, um, you extract it in the folder you created very early in step one. Um, that's okay if you can't recall right now. Um, but um, you extract it there, and then you have to rebuild uh, your container containerization. Or if you find, it, find out a way how, which I couldn't uh, myself, is um, just restart solar. Um, and have it apply. Because typically, to apl every time you change a solar configuration file, you want to restart solar set so that it applies. Um, that's the rule of thumb. Um, okay. And lastly, um, we create a search page. And I try to, I'm trying to keep it simple for this presentation. So you'll see a bare bones bar tick theme search page. Um, and to your left is you know typical view setup. Um, before you set up, when it, what, what I don't show here is before you see this, the image to your left is um, you can you have to select the data source of your search page, um, which in my case I searched the search API index that um, I created, and then you'll see the search page where you can alter it. Um, an important note, which I highlighted um, at the bottom right of the left image, is the cache setting. Um, you want to make sure the cache setting is search API tag based. Um, reason being is if you update content or you add content, um, you'll notice that your search results might be stale after it. You're like, why isn't it updating? However, if you cache bust it and it does appear appropriately. Well, wait. Yeah. Well, <laughs> sorry about that. The reason being is because um, you need to use this cache setting. Um, the, the maintainers of the module said to use it. Um, what it does is it adds a cache tag to the search page so that whenever your index, your solar index is updated, it tells that view to update itself. 
and the regular tag based one does not do that for you. Um, and this was the cause of um, an issue on my project, but we got it down. Um, yep. Okay, thank you all for uh, staying with me until now. Uh, now we'll get be getting into um, how to elevate search results with Solar 7. Um, I think typically most, um, I think um, it's hard to set up Elevate, like if you're on your own um, with what's out there right now. Maybe it's just me and, and me looking at the community um, forums, but um, this will be relevant to you if, it's, you're, if you're having a hard time setting up Elevate with just the solar backend. Okay, so this is just a high level overview of what I'll be going over. Uh, this diagram, but basically um, how it usually goes is a user searches in Drupal, uh, search API view, um, then Drupal sends that query to Solar. Um, Solar has a bunch of configuration files, but I'm only going to be going over three of them in green, and these are the three relevant files um, relevant to getting Elevate to work on your local. Um, so after your query goes to Solar, um, it will go to the default select handler in Solar Config Extra, and then it looks at elevate the XML to elevate um, the content you want. And then Schema Extra Types comes in because um, it creates a custom field type um, that analyzes the incoming query text. Um, it sounds complicated right now, but I will elaborate uh, further. Okay, so. I'll be go going over the three config files in green. Um, those are the, basically how, to, how you'll be elevating it locally. And the first one, the first config file is schema extra types. Um, so th this is where you start, this is first where you create your custom field type. Um, why do we create a custom field type? Um, well, because um, the current field type that you'll see later is called a string, and it doesn't properly filter the query text going into elevate.xml. Um, so at the very top left, that's a debug output. And you see that the query, the queue parameter has a, has a bunch of, I think, Lucene characters. Um, so that's actually the text that's going to, that elevate is actually trying to match. Um, but it should just be the, the text, the query text that you should be matching on. So what this custom field type does, it just analyzes the query text to properly, properly filter out all the Lucene characters so that the queue parameter can match with the query text of elevate.xml. And then once it matches an elevate.xml, um, what you specify in elevate.xml will apply. And that's how you elevate um, your content with just a solar backend. Um, this filter, you can use it. Uh, I have, in a future slide, I have um, the example that you can download. So you don't have to worry about memorizing this. Uh, it's very long. And um, you'd have to search the solar um, documentation, a lot of it, to understand what's going on. Um, but yeah, that's, so, that's why we cr so this is why we create a custom field type in schema extra types. And this is a, the version for the standard sol solar connector. So if, you're using, if you remember back when I um, presented on the solar connector in the search API server page, um, if you're using the standard solar connector, you want to use something like this um, for the filter, uh, for the custom field type. Um, if, you're using, if you're on Acquia, Acquia fortunately, the query, um, there's less uh, Lucene characters. Um, so it's less convoluted, but this is an example of um, one you could use if you're on an Aqua environment. And in fact, this is what I used, oh, yeah, this is what we, uh, my project used um, to enable Elevate on our project. So the second config file that um, you wanna make sure you have it appropriately set up is the solar config underscore extra, the XML file. And this is where it has the default search handler um, the select handler. So when you do a search query, this is um, the handler that handles it initially. 
And if you see in line 117 on the last components, um, those are the components that will run through the query after the, the default in, from lines 109 and 116. Um, and basically, you'll see on line 119, there's an elevator search component, and um, that's where the elevation is applying. And in that elevator component, you wanna make sure that elevator component has the custom field type you created, and that's on line 181 on the query field type. So query field type is just um, if you want to alter how um, the incoming query text matches the elevate, um, that's how you um, do that. Um, by default, it's string. So where it says ele um, on 181 where it says elevate, um, typically by default when you um, generate a solar config set, it'll be just string, and string doesn't do it. Um, so we want to make sure line 181, we use the custom field type that basically properly filters out the query text coming in from Drupal so that it matches the elevate.xml. And that's the most important part in solar config underscore extra um, in terms of my feature. Or and lastly, the last config file of the three is, of course, elevate.xml. Um, this is where you specify which content you want to appear at the top for whatever, whichever popular search query. Um, so at the bottom right, um, with the image of the code and IDE, um, we have a query tag with a text attribute of test. So what I'm saying, what as the developer um, we're doing here is basically saying when the user searches for test, um, these specific content should be at the top. And for the doc ID, um, how it's formatted is the site hash the index machine name, um, the entity, and then the entity ID and the lane code. Um, in this example, we are elevating nodes three and two, and in the before image, test two and test three at the bottom, and after applying it, it's at the top. Um, and then another important um, aspect to know is the site hash. Um, you really want to make sure you have the right site hash. Um, right now, the site hash, Solar, Drupal search and Solar, it looks at the site hash from the state API. It used to be in the configuration. Um, and to get the state site hash of your current environment, you do uh, drush state get search API solar dot site hash. Um, basically, when you search, uh, search results is based on the configured site hash. So um, if your site hash is 6LS011 instead of at the bottom right there, 5KS099, then um, those results won't come actually appear back. Um, if you have, if you're showing the num count, the search result count um, as part of your project, you'll see that it will have a number, but nothing appears then that's why, because it's seeing content, but it's not gonna show it because of the site hash. Um, this is another blocker on my project. Um, so important thing to note. And of course, to apply your, conf your config changes, um, you restart solar or you rebuild Lando. Um, if you're on Acquia with their self-service that they recently launched this year, um, it uh, apparently um, um, automatically restarts it or applies it. Um, and here's a link to where you can download the setup yourself. Um, I believe these slides will be uh, on YouTube or there'll be a link uh, later. Um, and basically, I have the Lando, Lando file for you. So you can just do Lando start and then Word document on the instructions and then the appropriate solar config set of what's of the latest versions right now. So maybe in a year, you might have to regenerate it. Um, and that's about it. Um, any questions? Thank you for your attention.
Oh, yes. Oh. Yes. Um, so um, there's a federal website where um, the documents are really important and professionals rely on them. And um, we, there's a lot of uh, media files. Um, and there are many use cases where the business customers, they want a particular PDF to, to be up top for those business customers, or for the taxpayers, sorry. Oh, what's there? Um, and um, just having it, the organic, the organic um, elevation component um, didn't do it for us. Um, all right, so I'll get into, for example, like search over the other best bet modules. So on my project, we have several search pages that use different um, indexes, like different, different views, several views that map to different indices. Um, and we want absolute control of it. Um, and we didn't choose search overrides because search overrides module doesn't support multiple indices, it only supports one. So if you want to elevate, you can only elevate one search indices for one search page versus several. And then search API best bets. Um, oh yeah, sorry, search, search API best bets, it doesn't give you, let you control the order of it, of the top results, and that's, what, that's why we didn't use that. Um, I think I may have digressed in your questions, but um, is there anything I'm missing? Um, oh, good. Sweet. Thank you. Any other questions? That's a good question. I might have to table back to you on that. Yeah, uh, uh, you can um, message, me, message me on LinkedIn and then um, I'll look into it. I honestly don't know right now. <laughs> That's a good question though. Mm. Oh, so like let's say you have like um, a micro? Uh huh. Uh -huh. Gotcha. Um, no, those are good questions. Oh, well, well, I can say from your question right now is you can differentiate by index. So if I'm understanding your question correctly, Okay, so same index. Yeah. Okay, but by the subject or category. By the search. Gotcha. Uh, can you repeat that? For, is there a way to? How does one mm -hmm. actually get the document ID in order to use Elevate without having to go into the next query, Solar, manual? Uh, I've never seen uh -huh. Google for your example. Oh, yeah, that's a good question. Um, yeah, so yet, yeah, unfortunately, as of right now, the only way, um, from my understanding right now, is look at the solar backend, but after getting the site hash, um, the name of your machine name, um, entity in that format, um, and then plug in Elevate, that's the only way I see of getting your, oh yeah, the doc ID. So yeah, this is something that you just, you just have to know um, from looking at the solar backend, but from the Drupal side, I know you can look at files from the Drupal side, but this is the file. 
Yeah, 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 you should definitely do that. Yep. Yep. Oh, right. <laughs> Oh yeah, so when Drupal in so when Drupal indexes your content, it indexes the line code if you have your uh, if you have multilingual enabled. Um, trans I forgot the translations. The name of that module I forgot it, but um, 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 so when Drupal indexes your your multilingual content, it um indexes the line code of it, and then um. When you search in a multilingual site, like let's say slash Korean, or yes, yeah, so like slash KO or something like that, um, it will only result return the the lang code, uh, the 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 doc IDs with the lang code, um, with that with that lang code. So in the slide right here on the bottom right, you'll see that en is at the at the bottom right right there. Um, so if you're an if you're using um, English, um, it will return that. However, you can add two more. You can add the same um, two doc two doc IDs below there and change it to Korean um, at the very end. Instead of a, a colon en, you put colon ko, and then you're on your search with the slash ko um, path alias. Um, it'll return it'll only elevate for those two on that particular. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I gotcha. Yeah, unfortunately, you have to um, put that other language the way it is in there. Um, so if you have um, file, the, the term file in Korean, in the, in the Korean character, um, you have to put it in the text right there. Yes. Yep. Yep. Sorry for a. Uh, uh, oh. Do the, do the Ajax? Um, search no. But did you get the um, the the error from uh, Dev Tools? No, I, I oh. Oh. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, could you uh, message me on LinkedIn on um, that particular is issue and then I'll get back to you. But I, I haven't ran into it. Okay. Yep. yep. <laughs> All right. Any more questions? Oh, yeah.
Pardon? Yes, yes. Initially, yes, but I got it to work, and then I, that specific Lando file, I, I put it in the uh, example. Um, oh yeah, so one of the gotchas before I got it to work was um, how to have the, how to get, how for it to read the proper config set, um, but that's in there. Um, and then one of the steps earlier it says to create a folder um, within your, uh, within your, your Drupal Lando folder where you'll store your config set. Um, that path is in the Lando file, and um, that's the only gotcha, I would say. Well, any more questions? Oh yeah, yeah. When you initiate, sorry. When you initiate, uh, when you do Lando start, um, it'll give you the host name of your site, but also the host name of your search server, and then. Yep, yep. And then Solar Admin UI should just pop up in your browser. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh. Yeah, I can't do that right now, but um, yep, 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 yeah, definitely. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> All right, any more questions? Sweet. Well, oh, go ahead. Right. Yeah, yeah. I think on like small to medium sized sites, like in terms of content, yeah, that'll be that'll suffice. But like in like very large sites where you boost a bunch and you have multiple producers boosting at the same time, um, that can get um, complicated in terms of exactly what you want at the very top, and that's where this comes in. Oh, they, uh, I don't know for sure, but from the looks of it, it seems like it's following the, you know, like the sprint points, the, like, three, five, seven, uh, Fibonacci, there you go, there you go, thank you. But that's just my guess, I don't know, but that's just my guess, sorry about that. Any more questions? If not, thank you everyone for your time. Um, this is my first time speaking, so thank you for being my first audience. Thank you.